Okay, everyone, this is my spoiler review of X-Men the Animated Series Season 5, Episode 4, Stormfront Part 2. This originally came out November 9th, 1996. This episode is actually one of my favorites of the series, believe it or not. There's a lot of things I like about this episode, but how it reveals the mysteries that were set up in the first part of this two-part episode story. And I really like how they let their audience discover things as the X-Men do. And it's written really well how it ends too. So we'll get into all of this. But you see they're building a statue of Storm here. And they're doing the Festival of Storm, which is pretty cool. But right away, you see hints at what's really going on. And that these workers aren't just workers, that they're slaves. And that that's shown already by being scared of the robots. And what I love about this episode is how they show things visually telling you something while they're writing and having a character say something else. For example, you see Storm. She's like, for the first time in my life... I am truly happy. She's like, I've been an X-Men since teenager, never allowing myself a life beyond my work. It cuts nicely with what she's not realizing what's actually happening, which is this slave worker they show while she's saying this, building the face on her statue. It also is written really well with lines like Wolverine bringing up how the past that it messed Storm's head up being praised too much as a goddess and that can get to her head and that this isn't good for her this is showing the side of storm that if she went that route which you see many characters in marvel go that route where they're over praised and they get into this godlike mindset of staying being so humble like a storm so they did a good job at showing why that side and route storm ago would be bad for someone like storm now like part one of stormfront wolverine has incredibly funny lines in this episode when she says to the x-men she's in love wolverine goes yeah, with a man you just met. And she's like, you'll see, Archon is truly a wonderful man. And it brilliantly cuts to him being a complete tyrant. And he's told by one of his workers, like, hey, if you just turn off this transmitter, there wouldn't have been this whole problem of the storm happening in the first place. But this is where we're finally seeing the mask come off of Archon. Because he's like, no way, that shuts power down on the guards. And there'll be no obedience strings to control the workers. So you see his master plan is revealed that he wants to capture workers from the neighboring planet Belgania and make them his slaves and he's planning to do it tonight and you get more hints now what's really going on to the characters like Jubilee and Storm where Jubilee knocks into one of the workers and you see how she's behaving and she's terrified that she hit into them and she's they're like you know it's fine but you could see something's up and then as the audience we know she is a slave now I love when Wolverine goes to one of the slaves and says Nowhere a guy can get a burger and a fries around here. And then he sees this guy's terrified of the robots. And now you see the fleet of robots leave. And Wolverine goes, they don't look like they're going out for pizza. So then now Archon reveals his true self to Storm finally when he's yelling at the slave to kneel. And he zaps her. And that's where Storm's already starting to combat this. And she's like, caution is possible without cruelty. Also, this happening, I love Jubilee's hysterical outfit she's wearing with the ears here. Now, the X-Men will see this ship filled with slaves coming in from Belgania. And it's really creepy just seeing all these robots being able to pull this off. And these robots attack the X-Men. And Wolverine says, I guess this means we aren't invited to the bachelor party. This leads to a great fun battle between the robots and the X-Men. And what's really strong underlying this whole episode is Jubilee keeping Storm's head on straight here and being the voice of reason to Storm. And she could see the doubt in Storm now about archon so their bond is very special in this episode and it gets a full payoff by the end now when cyclops is filled in from the slaves about what's going on with the transmitter he says i'm afraid it's time to break the news to storm and break her heart it's like that moment like i had said the last episode ended where you see your friend dating someone who you have a bad feeling about but you know they're really excited about it and then this is the part of that story where you have to kind of give them what you kind of figured was happening all along and break the news and at this point archon Tells his apprentice he just wants the X-Men eliminated now. And he's like, well, sir, those are your fiance's friends. And he's like, the mood of my fiance does not concern you. That was so funny to me. And it's great because the X-Men crash the wedding here. And Storm goes, Cyclops, Logan, what are you doing? And Wolverine has the best line. He says, ask your boyfriend. Ask him how he recruits the palace help. It ain't the want ads, baby. I lost it here. I had to pause. I was laughing so hard. That has to be top five line of the show. But now Storm finally faces the truth, sees their slaves, 
flips out. And by the way, I love Storm's outfit. I also like in the battle at the wedding that Cyclops does a front flip. I think it's the first time in the show we see him do one. And Jubilee has some more fireworks action, which I always love to see her powers. But angry Storm here is unleashed. She is pissed off, rightfully so. Hell hath no fury like a Storm scorned. But Jubilee talks her down here. This is important to that relationship and how that's really the anchor of this episode. She says, Archon's making you act against everything you believe in. And she says, you're right. So I really like that. And it did have payoff with their relationship set up in part one and how important that would be with Jubilee and Storm. The best parts of X-Men are when they're there for each other, reminding them who they truly are deep down. And Storm has great lines here. She says to Archon on her way out, no living being has the right to enslave another. This is also great just to put into a kid's show, great lesson for them and a great moment for storm where she zaps the statue of herself then zaps the transmitter and frees the slaves i'm so happy they did that i was worried for a second she was gonna leave and leave all these people suffering she has a great line a royal wedding gift from the heart so what a great exit for storm amazing and i love that wolverine tells jubilee to pump the brakes a bit when they see her back in the mansion she's clearly upset he's like you already done enough He's like, the rest she is going to have to work through herself when she thinks back on it because it's still a heartbreak for her. She was fooled. She was given this illusion of a happier life that just really wasn't there. And I really think it was a very, very good episode. So I'm going to give this one a 9.1. I think that it does justice to the character Storm. It gives her a moment to shine here, but it also convincingly has it where she figures everything out as the audience is and that she's fighting against really facing the truth because she still wants that joy in her life she's finally feeling but unfortunately that's not really what's happening but it's strong with the jubilee relationship how they use jubilee here is very effective great action and again wolverine has some killer one-liners in this episode amazingly funny dialogue in it so overall very strong episode one of the best to me so i'm giving a 9.1 let me know your thoughts this episode I read every comment, try to respond as many as I can. Hit that sub button, and I'll see you next time.